after about two days of intense speculation and reporting, and tons of words and claims from sources, Kyrie Irving shocked the NBA world by deciding to opt in to his $37 million contract option with the Brooklyn Nets for next season, putting to bed the idea that he would be opting out and uh, instead signing a $6 million mid-level exception to join the LA Lakers next season and reunite with LeBron. <laughs> It's crazy that, like, Kyrie is the probably one of the only players in the league that um, could conceivably, like, do that. And, like, people would believe it's a possibility because anyone else, you know, it'd be pretty much an open and shut. Yeah, $37 million? Oh, Yeah, I'll stay here. And if things get bad, I'll, I'll force a trade. Um, at the end of the day, the Nets get pretty much what they wanted, exactly what they wanted. Kyrie uh, returning to the team on a short-term deal, uh, team-friendly, kind of depending on how you use the phrase, but $37 million for one year is a lot better than $250 million for five years with Kyrie, which is what he was kind of looking for. So here, he'll get a chance to, um, to play at that top form again and hopefully not miss... Um, you know, a large chunk of the season, whether it be personal choice, injuries, anything like that. Hopefully he gets a chance to just play, stay healthy and show what he can do and, you know, earn that contract, but whether it's with the Nets or another team uh, next season. So the big thing about this um, is, of course, the fact that uh, Brian Windhorst went on ESPN this morning, uh, Monday morning, and <laughs> said the Nets are ready to lose Kyrie and KD because they realize that KD is there with Kyrie and he's upset at how this whole thing's been handled, and now he wants out too. And of course, outlets went crazy. Speculation started running rampant. You had Damian Lillard, Yusuf Nurkic, and other trailblazers posting photoshops of Durant in a Blazers jersey. Uh, DeAndre Ayton jumped um, in odds making. The Nets jumped to like the third best odds to sign DeAndre Ayton, which immediately led to sign and trade for Kevin Durant speculation. Like, it, it, it exploded. This was a huge, huge miss for the NBA media over these last couple days because no one said anything. It was all just secret sources. It was all just these analysts and reporters just saying things. And in the end, Kyrie gets the last laugh by announcing on Twitter pretty much, like, yeah, I'm opting in. Uh, he announced it to Shams, who, big win for Shams here in the shams Woj war. Um, I'm Team Shams personally, so I love to see him win. But uh, the statement that Kyrie gave is uh, is pretty funny. So this is what Shams tweeted. He said, Normal people keep the world going, but those who dare to be different lead us into tomorrow. I've made my decision to opt in. See you in the fall. A11 even. Those who dare to be different lead us into tomorrow. If, if opting in to a $37 million contract is daring to be different, then I am ready to be different however many times I need to be uh, to secure that type of bag. So, obviously speculation has been going around about the, the state of the relationship between the, two te or between the two sides, Kyrie and the Nets, and then what that meant for KD. But at the end of the day... All of it is just speculation <laughs> until one of those guys who are very vocal on social media. Like if something was wrong, I, I kind of can't help but think that they would like be quick to announce that and like comment on it because like KD is commenting on anything that comes across his timeline. So it's, it's just crazy to see, you know, just how fast that NBA media machine works and how fast um, stories can become these whole big things before you know it. There's podcasts that are like, all right, here we go, Kyrie to the Lakers, where's Kevin Durant gonna go? What does this do for the Lakers odds? What does this mean for Westbrook? What it, and like all of that was was gone in about the span of 12 hours. Um, and that's, you know, that's the risk of the game. Uh, the big losers here with Kyrie deciding to opt in are of course the Lakers because even when it's not about them, it's about them. Let's let's be real. And uh, about two, three hours after Kyrie announced his opt-in, 
and Lakers fans had finally stopped punching the air and going through it, the Houston Rockets announced that they had reached a buyout agreement with John Wall, who, last time he played, looked pretty damn good for someone coming off of, like, two catastrophic leg injuries, 900 or 1,000 or so missed days of action, looked pretty good in the minutes that Houston did let him play. So it was clear he could be a contributor to one of those teams, and he had almost immediately... After they finally reached this buyout agreement, which had been bubbling and going back and forth for over a season, he sat out all last season just because they didn't want to buy him out. Like, they were like, hey, can we buy you out? And he was like, no, my contract is like $50 million. I'm not turning that down. You don't want to play me, play me, but you're going to pay me. And like, hey, kings do what kings do. Um, Nothing but respect on that. You sign the contract and they trade for it. Get your bag, John. So he comes out, or not even he, just almost immediately after this this buyout is announced, it is announced that John Wall will join the Los Angeles Clippers. It's a bummer. It hurts. It hurts to say. So he joins Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Reggie Jackson, Luke Kennard, um, all of those guys. Whoever they're bringing back to, I think there's a couple more that I'm not mentioning, but whoever they bring back, and if John Wall stays healthy and even just plays at the level of production that we saw in those limited minutes in Houston, this is a huge boost for LA. Uh, We have no idea what Kawhi's going to look like coming back from his injury. Paul George kind of just seems like he's a bad game away from having some bad injury somewhere, so... Who knows what this team will actually look like in in game, but on paper, this could be a very, very fun offensive team. And the thing that John Wall does that's underrated is he improves that uh, perimeter defense. He improves that one-on-one guard defense because he may not have the explosion that he had back in his peak, but he absolutely can still make those those smart basketball plays on both ends of the court, but especially on defense. He, can, he knows how to position himself. He knows where to be. He can always, you know, seem to somehow pull athleticism out to make a huge defensive play, whether it's a swat, a steal, anything like that. He may not have the explosion, but he has all of the, the smarts that he had this entire time. So that's going to be something that the Clippers are going to really have to lean on because they've kind of struggled being able to keep scoring and defense at the guard position on the court at the same time whether it was Patrick Beverly who more of a defensive player or Reggie Jackson more of an offensive player they were always sacrificing something and so the theory here has to be if John Wall could do a little bit of both just well enough it's going to lift that team ceiling exponentially for the Lakers probably means staring down the barrel of a Kemba Walker buyout and sign if he wants to come to LA you know, nothing like replacing uh, injury-prone players with more injury-prone players, but at the same time, Kemba's the perfect locker room guy. He's a great leader to have. Uh, if the Lakers had any young players left, he'd be a great mentor for them. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, really, though, just a, a bad day. I woke up this morning joking with my non-Laker friends about the the Lakers signing Kyrie for a mid-level exception, and then trading Russ for Bradley Beal uh, just because he demands his way out to L.A. But, uh, you know, life comes at you pretty quick. <laughs> um, other than that, though, I think that's about it from like the big news of the day. Uh, free agency starts, or well, negotiations start the 30th, and the actual free agency period begins July 3rd, Sunday. So we'll see. I'm sure we'll have a lot of things start to come out um, tomorrow and Wednesday as we get closer to that deadline or to that start of free agency. Um, So I'm sure I'll be back later in the week. Uh, In the meantime, though, if you have thoughts on this whole Nets thing, um, KD, Kyrie, any of that, which I should say, too, I'm a big like I'm a big Kyrie fan. I really enjoy him uh, and his performance on the court. I don't always agree with the things um, he says or his methods of going about things, but I do respect that he's one of those players that does seem to put his money where his mouth is. I mean, he sacrificed about seventeen, eighteen million dollars last year, played in thirty home games or so, just because you know he was opposing the league's um, vaccine policies. 
So, like, I respect that he's not just, like, doing everything and cashing the checks and then still saying, like, oh, I don't like this. So, like, I respect that he always does that. I don't always agree with it, but I will say that, like, he seems like the type of person that lives for, like, clowning the media. At least, like, that's he talks like he lives for clowning the media. So, I'm sure he's probably thrilled at how much this story, like, really, like, exploded out of control this fast. Um... <laughs> So who knows? I mean, it's kind of just like par for the course now with these guys. Uh, we'll see what happens with the rest of the Nets stories. Um, I kind of had a thought that maybe the Aiton stuff was a uh, a potential Ben Simmons signal and like the Nets would just trade Ben Simmons without ever seeing him on the court, which I mean, if you can go get Aiton, that solves a lot of Brooklyn's needs. So we'll see if that's going to be anything. Um, the Pistons are now the favorites to get Miles Bridges. Uh, Charlotte doesn't seem to want to offer him a max. Detroit just cleared out max salary space by shipping out Jeremy Grant to Portland. Uh, if that happens, it's going to make it even harder for the Suns to find a trade partner to sign and trade Aiden. So things could get interesting there as well. But I think that's all the big headlines that I remember seeing uh, today. So let me know your thoughts on any of those. Anything you're excited to see later in the week, any moves that you're expecting your team to make or want your team to make, let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the day, and I will be back.